Welcome to The Crowned Life, and this video today is about when you can't stop the pain. It is breakup advice for ongoing grief management. So when you clicked on this video, you probably already had somebody in mind. And if you didn't, well, think about that person who holds the highest regard in your heart. It's that person who no one else has been able to live up to, that person who no one else can replace, whose loss has been unforgettable. In fact, at times it may even haunt you. And every time their memory returns to you, you thought you'd gotten over them, you thought you'd put the past behind you and moved on with your life, only months or years later, the memories return again, giving you something more to work through, like a never ending story. That's what this video is about. It's about ongoing grief management for after a breakup that might have happened yesterday, maybe last year, maybe 30 years ago. It doesn't matter because real love never dies and the heart wants what it wants. So this video is not going to be about cutting soul ties. Got to say that up front. Very popular advice going around. Uh, tried that. Didn't work for me. I don't know anybody who it's worked for, to tell you the truth. So I'm not going to be telling you to cut soul ties. I'm not going to give you advice on how to stop feeling what you feel. No, this video is about feeling what you feel as deeply as you need to for as long as you need to in order to fully process and release the grief. And I'll share with you some tips on how you can alleviate the suffering of living in a reality you don't want, but can't change. And if you stay tuned to the end, I'll share with you a spiritual practice, actually a couple of them, <laughs> that help me and will probably help you to find some peace in circumstances that seem to have stolen it from you. Now we all have our own personal miseries we have to live with. It's just part of the human experience, I'm convinced. <laughs> and a very common one is having to live life without the love of your life. In fact, while I was preparing for this video, the song Who Knew by Pink kept coming up in my mind. So some of you may wanna watch the official video. It very much relates to the kind of situation I'm speaking to in this video. In fact, I'll link it below. I'll probably pin it to the comments down below, so look out for that. But it very much conveys the storyline of somebody who got into a relationship very happily, very innocently, and then the relationship just disintegrated or you know unraveled or blew up in their face and they never knew. Nobody could have ever told them it was gonna turn out this way. And that's the kind of relationship loss that I'm speaking to in this video. Now, a lot of you, you know, um, the relationship loss fortunately doesn't involve a person who's dead. Some of you watching this, un that unfortunately might be your situation. And if so, I am very sorry. That alone is a tragedy in itself. And having that person emotionally depart from your life and physically as well is doubly devastating, okay? In both scenarios, people deal with having plans for a, their futures wrapped around a particular person. Now, maybe they were planning to, you know, partner in life with this person, build a life together, you know, have a family, uh, retire together, uh, you fill in the blank, you know, or it could simply be that your connection is not something easily replaced by another. And maybe you thought, well, you know, I'll just find somebody else or I'll find somebody better. But, you know, year after year, decade after decade, perhaps, you realize there was something very special and unique about this person that is not easily replaced. Now, of course, losing a person through breakup isn't the same as losing them through death. So I, I do have to say, I mean no disrespect to those of you who have su suffered such a loss. However, there are some parallels in these experiences that I'll respectfully draw upon because the outcomes of these two experiences are somewhat similar in that you'll not be able to build a life with this person. 
Now, people can try to impose their timetables upon you for how long you should grieve before you just get over it by now. <laughs> oh, you're not over it by now? Shouldn't you be over that by now? What's wrong with you? You're still stuck on that person? Um, yeah, but they don't have to live with your pain. You know, people can say stuff like that, but they don't have to live with your pain and they don't fully understand this person's meaning in your life. They don't know your backstory. They don't understand your value system or your needs and maybe they're entirely different from you. So they don't understand why this person was so important to you and to your life. So what I say to those people is basically to hell with their schedules and their timelines. It takes what it takes for as long as it takes. Consider people who've actually lost a loved one to death. Do they ever stop grieving? Do they uniformly get over it after six months? No, they don't. Everyone grieves on their own timetable, some more, some less, and no matter where they are in the grieving process, it's not uncommon for them to occasionally return to the gravesite and pay their respects. Heck, here in Texas, you know, where I'm from, a lot of people will memorialize the loss of a loved one by putting decals on their windows, you know, of, of their vehicles, and they're driving around with that every day. So perhaps you in some way, though you haven't lost this person through death, for those of you who haven't, um, maybe you in a way still emotionally circle back around on occasion to the gravesite or memory of a relationship that's long gone, even though this person lives on. Does that mean you're unhealed? Does it mean you're in denial? Does it mean you've never gotten over it? I don't think so. Some of you have moved on with your lives. You read the writing on the wall. You try to make the most of your life without them. You know and accept the truth about them and your relationship, yet, yet, you can't seem to forget them or stop thinking of what might have been. Reminds me of some girlfriends of mine who've lost children uh, through abortion or miscarriage and later regretted it. And again, I know this is a darker, much dark, darker parallel to draw here, but... In their own words, they've said to me, you never forget that child. And every time you sit down for a family meal, you see that there's a child missing from the table. And there's nothing you can do to unsee that. In fact, one friend of mine coped by releasing balloons to the sky every year at the anniversary of her child's death that occurred 20 years prior. So you see, some losses take decades to process. Some grief must be managed over the long term. This is an unpopular truth that nobody wants to tell you because nobody wants to hear it. But it is the truth, nonetheless. Another unpopular truth? Many people deny themselves and others full ongoing healing because doing so requires that they sit with and feel pain and uncomfortable feelings they'd rather avoid. Now, it's much easier for me to tell you, I have a silver bullet solution. And then when it doesn't work, I can blame you for why. And we do see that going on a lot in the self-help community. I even saw it going on in the Christian community. It's all over. It's human nature. And that's why it's a very popular misconception that healing or getting over it happens in one fell swoop. And that revisiting someone's memory is a sign that you remain unhealed or you're stuck in the healing process and haven't moved on. I used to see this all the time in churches where they'd stick people in a prayer line and have people pray peace and healing over them and then have the attitude like, okay, you're done now. <laughs> but they weren't. They weren't done. And then when they said so, they were told, well, it's because you didn't believe enough or you didn't have enough faith. Like it was their own fault that they didn't heal conclusively and instantaneously, when in fact, that's not how healing works, at least not in my experience and the experience of other people I've encountered. 
And if it does work that way, well, I'd be willing to bet big bucks that you're repressing your feelings. Personally, I prefer to look at healing as a process or an ongoing way of life. Like peeling back an onion, it happens in layers as we become more conscious. Our consciousness about the loss evolves and the meaning of it exponentially expands our understanding of ourselves and others. Like going from Google Maps street view to city view to satellite view, we get more perspective over time and that perspective refines us emotionally, relationally, and spiritually. So for me to tell you to just cut it off by cutting soul ties, which by the way, doesn't work, or to just get over it by now is stunning your personal growth process. Furthermore, it's likely misdirecting pain from the emotional body into the physical body rather than releasing it out of the body entirely through creative processes such as communicating, crying, writing, by the way, for more information about the mind-body connection of pain, watch my video on healing the emotional body. I'll have the link for it at the end of this video. Now, as a side note, I want to talk about, you know, letter writing. A lot, a lot of people do this um, as a way of healing, and then they don't send them. And there's some controversy, should you send it or not send it? And I've heard some relationship coaches say it's a lot more powerful when you do send it. However, if you have already done this in the past and it never worked or your person made it very clear to you that they're not interested in reconciling and healing this connection, then you probably do need to keep the letter to yourself out of respect for the boundary that's already been drawn. But getting back to the topic of healing, instead of rejecting, hiding, suppressing, or denying those feelings, here's what I suggest instead. There is a mindfulness technique called RAIN. RAIN is an acronym for recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. And the mindfulness technique is about practicing radical acceptance. I mean, what other choice do you have, right? You got to accept. So how do you do this? How do you accept things that you don't agree with? It's through the RAIN technique. So R represents recognize. A, allow, I, investigate, N, nurture. And basically, this is a process by which you start with R, recognize the feelings that you feel in the truth of the situation. Okay, so it might be the truth of the situation is you're not going to be able to reconcile with this person. You're not going to be able to build a life with them. How does the truth of that make you feel? sit with those feelings sit with those feelings then a allow maybe you need to tell yourself it's okay i'm gonna be okay and you need to come to a place where you're able to accept that this other person has the right to live life on their own terms whether you agree with it or not you get to this mindset where you're like, you know, I don't agree with you, but I accept you have a right to live life on your own terms. I might think you're making a mistake, but you have a right to make your mistakes in life like the rest of us. You come to a place of acceptance, which doesn't necessarily mean you agree, right? Let's not get that confused. You don't have to agree with them to accept them. But this is you, you know, coming to a place where you're like, okay, I accept. It is what it is, as painful as it is. Then I investigate. All right, now that you have sat with those feelings and you've accepted the, the truth of the situation, what do you now need? Given the reality of the situation, do you need to be heard? Do you need to be loved? Do you need to be supported? 
And this is a practice where you're investigating, you're searching not only your emotional body, but your physical body for needs. Some of you, like I said, you might have um, a mind, there might be a mind body spirit connection. There might be a psychosomatic uh, condition that you're dealing with where there's, there's pain, there's tension, there's aches within your body that have an emotional uh, connection because you feel that you're not being supported, that you're having to go it alone. Um, and your body is communicating to you that there's a need that needs to get met. So feel that, identify that, investigate that. What do you need now? And then the next step, nurture is you basically nurturing those needs you figuring out how on a practical level are you going to meet those needs regardless of this person regardless of the truth of the situation so for example if you need to be heard but they're not listening and you can't fix that can you go talk to somebody who will listen maybe you need to feel loved by this person but they're not doing that they've lost that love and feeling <laughs> for whatever reason or they're they're just they're they're suppressing it they're hiding it they're denying it whatever the reason they're not giving you the love okay can you give yourself the love is there someone else in your life that can give you the love how can you get the love apart from them Maybe it's support, you know, if it's support and they're not being supportive of you and, you know, there's nothing you can do about that and you've accepted it. Okay, how can you support yourself? Who in your life is supporting you right now? And it might be that you are nurturing these needs by simply communicating to yourself, you know what, I'm not leaving me. They might have left me, they might have abandoned me or rejected me or whatever, but I'm not going to leave me. I'm not going to abandon or reject or neglect me. This is a time where you practice self compassion to alleviate suffering. So you can get what you need. No, it might not be your ideal. Your ideal, like I said, is maybe something you have had to recognize and allow as something that's not going to happen. But you're going to find a way to not leave yourself in lack and trapped in a vicious cycle where you know, you keep going from suppressing the feelings, denying the truth of the situation, trying to rationalize and reason and hope and wish for things to change because you can't accept and you're denying what your needs are and not doing what you need to do to nurture those needs this is flipping the table on that this is reversing the script where you're like okay i feel what i feel it is what it is now what and you take care of business which is loving yourself, supporting yourself, and valuing yourself. Now, RAIN is more of a practice on a personal level, okay? Uh, what I want to talk to you about next is on an interpersonal level, okay? But like you're trying, this is like you trying to heal without that person even being there, all right? And I, so I'm going to share with you a spiritual practice that has helped me and hopefully it'll help you. Um, it's kind of like this prayer meditation uh, type practice where you close your eyes to shut out distractions and that helps you to really tune in to your feelings and your intentions and really putting it out there and it involves the four simple phrases, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. Now, if any of those phrases don't ring true to you, then don't say it, right? I'm not telling you to lie or be a disingenuous or whatever, and there's, there's power to words. I want you to say what you mean and what you feel, okay? That's going to be where the most power is, 
when your words are coming from this pure, undefiled place or unfiltered place in your heart, okay? And once you've gathered your words, um, not only say them and feel them and mean them, but go even deeper with them, okay? So let me give you an example. Let's start with the simple phrases. And by the way, I gotta say, you know, you can write this down, all right? Like I have, you put it on a little post-it note, okay? And maybe you put it beside your bed if you think of this person before you go to bed at night or maybe you work with them, I don't know, you know? And so you keep it at your desk where you work so that, you know, if you think of them a lot when you're at work or you run into them at work, I don't know. A lot of people have workplace romances that go south, you know? Um, who knows what the situation is? But maybe in your car as you're driving home, you know, uh, on a long commute, put it where you're going to need it to remind yourself to repeat these words. By the way, as a side note, these words are really powerful for yourself, okay, for your own self healing when you're trying to work through giving compassion to yourself. But for the purpose of this video, I'm using these words for this other person, okay? And this is a way of you healing the relationship, the connection with that individual without them being present to do it, okay? At least from your end, right? So do me a favor. Let's go through the exercise here, the meditation. And, um, you know, if you need to pause the video to get into a quiet private space, you know, then you might want to do that. Um, or just come back and do that later, all right? But... Um, basically, close your eyes and with me, let's say the four phrases, okay? And I don't know what it is with these bugs around. I'm just telling you, get rid of the distractions and here they are. <laughs> okay, so let's begin. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Okay. Super simple. But keep repeating that. Okay? Until you find peace. And I would encourage you to go even deeper with that and elaborate on it. Again, from a place of authenticity, don't say anything that's not genuine to how you feel, right? Because your spirit knows that you're lying, right? God knows you're lying. You have to be real, all right? So let, let me kind of, let me take this meditation even further, all right? I love you. I love you despite our differences. I'm sorry it didn't work out. I'm sorry we were not able to work this out. Please forgive me for any pain I have caused you. Thank you for the joy, happiness, and pleasure that we shared. <laughs> so you gotta say it, feel it, mean it, and repeat it until you come to a place of peace. Like, if anything I said here doesn't vibe with you, don't parrot, right? Don't parrot what I said. You've, you've got to um, say what you feel in your heart. That's going to be the most effective. Belief is really powerful. And, yeah, if you don't believe in the power of words, then, um, you know, and you think that's like, I don't know, some spiritual hoodooism, <laughs> then you should really check out um, Dr. Emoto's uh, rice experiments. Um, I will put some links on my blog and go to my blog and check out more about that if you are interested. But, um, 
you know, once you've gathered your words and you've spoken them in a spirit of truth, um, like I said, repeat that. Sit with that, feel that, and repeat it until you have arrived to a, at a place of peace. And in this way, your spirit is speaking to their spirit. And if you don't believe that your spirit is speaking to their spirit, when you do this, then ask God to send them that message. And again, this is a way that you can heal the relationship, at least from your end, so that there's no more unfinished business, at least on your end. You've done your work. Now, is this a, you know, one-time cure-all? No, I never promised that. You know, like I said from the beginning, you know, I think that healing is something that is a lifelong ongoing process. It's an unpopular truth, but it's the truth. And so, you know, I don't promise you that it's a one-time cure-all, but I will promise you that if you take this advice, you will probably find, feel more peace within yourself, despite circumstances where maybe you felt that peace was stolen from you. At least that's my hope for you. Thanks for watching and until next time, y'all be blessed.